The Mocking Mystery by Thomas Ligotti Read by Jeff Clark Where ultimate knowledge is denied, mystery must rule. Every enterprise is instigated by it. Every world is founded upon it. Above all does it live in the ruins of certain cities where everything has been denied, and even the shadows suffocate in the dense ether of mystery. A type of worship may even be devoted to the ruined state, consecrating earthly objects that in their decrepitude have attained a divine status. Crumbling pillars shake off their burden, forsake their function, and stand serenely above the rubble of old impediments. And what domes and spires may still be held aloft, release their grasp upon the gray heights of a barren horizon. Below, carven images of gods and beasts all abandon themselves to shattered confusion, their once perfect likenesses now heaped and corroded, their significance lost. Skeletons eased of all flesh openly consort with stones and dust, liberated from the duties of life. Indeed, the ideal of the necropolis appears to be annihilation. Everywhere things are effacing or disguising their existence, seeking a mask of shadows or a veil of pale light wavering across their disfigured surfaces. But their struggle for obscurity nonetheless remains only a matter of form. An invasion of vitality still threatens the ruins of certain cities. And though it may arrive in different guises, the outcome will be the same. A new genesis. Preceding revivification, there may be a sudden darkness which embraces the dead city. And within the darkness great flashes of light create the appearance that things are in motion. There may only be a frail mist which drifts among the ruins and slithers into their every fracture. Or there may be nothing at all, or nothing that may be witnessed. Yet all the same it will happen that something begins to stir where, for so long, everything had been at rest. Then it will seem that the skeletons have broken the silence with moans of life, and the stones themselves have emerged from sleep. And other things join in the awakening, as old dreams sink into the ocean of unmemory, and the ruins are recreated in a new semblance. The source of this resurrection to come may remain unknown its purposes secreted in the remotest parts of the creation. Yet no force ever withstands the way of this mysterious maker of new worlds, just as no world is ever allowed to endure in its greatness. For nothing is allowed a face but that it may be only a mask without a constant soul. Nothing is allowed a mask but that it may wither and finally be torn from its face. And upon these truths will all things thrive in the great chains of that strange and endless dream, and flourish, let it be said, in the mysterious atmosphere of ruination. For wherever mystery serves as a foundation, only ruins may be erected. There every structure is secretly ravaged as it rises for beneath lie the wavering substrata and a strange life that will not share itself with any other. Yet more strangely, neither will it long tolerate the dignity of a picturesque decay, and thus is forever creeping into the desolate ruins of certain cities to violate their sleep. Then will the wreckage be resurrected in new shapes, the scenery pulled up on another stage, Lively faces painted upon dead players, their twisted limbs restrung with wires. But mystery itself remains guarded, its life sealed far away from its creation. And in a world that seems to possess a life of its own, figures parade in a state of terror which is immortal, unchanging, and which endures through all the phases of a fateful ordeal.
as their only inviolable birthright.